is added. By being on the streets now basically for the last four months. Newly released from prison, uh, where I served a period of time for armed robbery. And the reason I committed those armed robberies was because I was homeless. Not that I'm committing any offences at the moment, but desperation drives people to things that they wouldn't normally do. I have a lot of issues in my life that I have to deal with, psychiatric, financial, uh, I don't have a drug problem, I don't have an alcohol problem, my problem is basically I haven't got a home, and without a home, there's so much you don't have, without a home you, you haven't got any base to work, work on, you don't have anywhere to sleep on a regular basis, so you're constantly moving so people lose track of you. Uh, by not having a home, you can't work really because you can't turn up to work on time because you don't know what time you're going to wake up in the morning because you haven't got an alarm clock. Your self-respect goes down. Uh, you become nasty at the world. Yeah. And one way of dealing with that nastiness is a lot of people turn to drugs and alcohol. I've been down that road and I won't go down it again. I uh, used to drink a lot, smoke a lot of marijuana. Basically just because of my situation there, there was no light at the end of the tunnel as far as I could see. Uh, so what, what ends up happening, uh, it becomes a vicious circle where yeah. what little money you do get, you yeah. waste yeah. on things to numb. Yeah, I did change to a certain amount. I actually had some responsibility in there. A lot of people in prison, I won't say a lot, but a proportion of those in prison haven't got a, an education. So their reading and writing skills just aren't there. I used to earn extra canteen items by doing poetry for people. I won't say a standard poem, but a standard format I use where you're getting their girlfriend's name, colour of their hair, colour of their eyes, favourite flower, all that sort of thing, and I'll work it into a poem for them, you know, give, give it that, that personal touch. I've worked quite often. Uh, I've had many jobs. Yeah. I've worked here as a storeman, a labourer. Yeah. Uh, probably one of my better jobs I had, I was a night manager of a supermarket. Uh, I started off there yeah. just as a casual night filler and yeah. slowly worked my way up the chain and within two years I was the actual night manager. Yeah. Uh, between 30 and 40 staff under me most nights of the week. Uh, count the money, the whole cat and caboodle. I, I committed an offence and went to jail. Yeah. Um, but that's where the blame has to stop. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I did my time yeah. as, as I did. I didn't try to escape or anything like that, it was a, although I did play up. <laughs> Uh, but that's part and parcel, it's, it's another society in there. But out here, uh, people like me fall through the cracks. The one thing I would change, the way society deals with the underprivileged. Too many people make a living yeah. out of helping the homeless. Yeah. Uh, I know that doesn't sound right, uh, but it's the honest truth. At the moment, the government throws money willy-nilly at the charities, uh -huh. uh, thinking that they know best. Salvation Army, uh, okay. St Vincent de Paul, yeah. uh, Mission Australia. Most of their money goes on infrastructure and yeah. administration. Uh -huh. yeah. Probably for every every dollar they get, yeah. three quarters of it, yeah. the underprivileged don't see. Right. It all goes into infrastructure and, yeah. and you know, people, you know, supervisors and managers and yeah. support staff and all of that but they don't actually get around to helping the people huh. that's the problem uh, as i said earlier i fall into a bad demographic i'm yeah. over 25 under 55 yeah. single yeah. no kids yeah. no family uh, criminal record psychiatric issues yeah. no one wants to know but yeah, it's, I'm on a merry-go-round and now I want to turn it off. Is that on TV?